Good morning, folks. This image goes with a good article that begins discussing a stellar accretion disk and how much planet material they claim to have found in the atmosphere of dying white dwarfs, and they wind up discussing how much more common rocky Earth-like planets are than they ever imagined. Link is below. Latest U.S. drought update sees the western half of the U.S. taking the worst of it. They do have localized information as well. The most interesting quakes of the last 24 hours came north and south. These in Iceland are well above average and swarming. They're complemented by a couple of larger tremors nearer to the Antarctic boundary faults. Not the first time we've mentioned the Calvert Cliffs nuclear plant. This time we have a reactor shut down and as of yet, not determined the cause. North of that, only miles from a similar incident not long ago, we had a meteorite hit another house. This one's about the size of an avocado. Parts of the Marshall Islands are in a drought disaster with time running low for a few thousand residents in the northern part of the region. Australia has sent aid. Another hailstorm to report in India. No reports of casualties yet, but hundreds more homes and countless crops were destroyed. That line of storms identified crossing Europe yesterday was no joke. Lightning strikes did injure people. The flooding continues and the wind is driving hard as this line of storms moves into Eastern Europe. Tropical Cyclone Jamala in the Indian Ocean slotted to head west and weaken. We'll keep watch. Eastern Pacific still got the warm air driven straight north to Alaska and the Yukon Territory there. Meanwhile, the convergence identified in the central states yesterday did not disappoint and indeed made its way up to my neck of the woods and it's still here. This is actually round two of recording this due to a huge thunderclap five minutes ago. Looks like we have a fairly similar situation this evening. Remember to check your local warnings as this is not a substitute. Coming to space weather. The solar wind is officially quiet. The speed has gone from near 500 kilometers per second yesterday to 400 today. No major changes in density leave our magnetic shield calm and undisturbed with no significant plasma penetration. We even got mostly quiet on the induction magnetometer. Gong shows the umbral opening turning away from Earth with an extra little tug at the left side of the field at the end, bringing the red further into view. Looking at the sunspots, bottom right, pretty much your last chance to flare before turning away. On the north, we have a bunch of very small and somewhat disorganized sunspots with a need for serious magnetic mixing. Now, I want you to notice something on the magnetogram that you don't see on the intensity gram. Technically, it's out of view, but that is the leading edge of a monster spot that called ahead to let us know he was coming. Before cresting into view, an M3 solar flare was produced and we were allowed to catch a glimpse of it before the show begins. Now as we look at the SDO footage, you will notice that the coronal effects of the solar flare are much more visible than the flare itself. Believe it or not, flares like this are part of the Earth facing quiet nearly uninterrupted for two years now. The spots flare before or after they face Earth. Every day someone asks why the sunspots decay or fail to flare when facing Earth, and I have no real explanation. I don't know why it's happening. but. About 400 years ago, the Maunder scientist husband and wife team for who the greatest solar shutdown on record is named, the Maunder Minimum, witnessed the exact same phenomenon. The mystery continues. Let's hope this filament up north stays put today. Looks a little antsy up there. Eyes open. No fear. It's 6.45 a.m. Eastern Time and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.